Good morning. The background to our reflection today, which is that God sent Jesus Christ to redeem all of humankind, derives from my life experience, not only as an international relations and diplomacy practitioner, but also as a student and professor of history. Through that experience, the Lord has blessed me with the opportunity to look at Jesus from both the biblical and purely historical perspectives. A few weeks ago, Bishop Ortiz arranged a Zoom coffee with the Bishop session where participants shared a six word story of Jesus in their life. My story was historical Jesus confirms Jesus of scriptures. My point here is that if two beings similar to us on this earth were to come to this planet from a completely different universe, and if one of them read the Bible and the other read a purely historical account of the life of Jesus, they both would agree that their two Jesus were one and the same person. It is not unusual to hear the argument that Jesus belongs to this or that group of people. What I am saying here today is that God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to earth to redeem all of humankind. This promise can be found in the following, among other biblical verses. In Matthew 28, we read as follows. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. In Galatians, we read, he redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Romans 3 says, Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles too? Yes, of Gentiles too. Again, in Galatians, we read as follows. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. The Jewish people were enslaved in a foreign land, Egypt. By freeing them back to their own land, God showed not only the universal nature of freedom, but also ensured that the coming of his son, Jesus Christ, would have an impact on the maximum geographical area possible. At the risk of oversimplification, we shall only mention that Jesus came down to earth in Western Asia or the Middle East, by which we mean places, settlements, towns, cities, and localities that include, but are not limited to, Palestine, Jerusalem, Judea, 
Samaria, Bethlehem, the Holy Land, etc. According to purely historical accounts, North Africa, Southeast Europe, and Western Asia had a long history of having been linked together as a single unit. First, the Greeks ruled over this Mediterranean, Mediterranean world. Alexander the Great is most associated with the Greek Empire. Second came Roman rule, also to the entire area. It was during the rule of the Roman Empire that Jesus Christ was born. The important point to also note here is that it is this entire Mediterranean area which is also the focus of the Bible. I refer to this as the biblical world. In Matthew 2, we learn that the wise men who brought gifts and paid homage to the new king in Bethlehem came from the east. Legend has it that the three were from India, Persia, and Arabia, respectively. Further evidence of God's desire to have the Redeemer impact a wide geographical area. Joseph and Mary traveled back to Egypt to take refuge in order to save Jesus from the envy and wrath of King Herod. This is another instance in the Bible which provides evidence that redemption was not just for the Jewish people, but for all of humankind. North Africa is again mentioned in the Bible in the context of the crucifixion of Jesus. According to Luke, as the soldiers led Jesus away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. Cyrene was in present day Libya. God could not have arranged a better place on earth to send the, the Redeemer of all of humankind than through the geographical area which in those days was the intersection of the world. In today's reading from Romans, we are told that Jesus is the firstborn within a large family. In the reading, the question is asked, if God is for us all, who is against us? The answer is nothing nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. All of us are God's children, no matter we are the Jewish people or Gentiles, and whatever our nationality or ethnic origin. Much is happening in our midst these days. We need to remember that God released the Jewish people from slavery in Egypt. Modern slavery has been abolished throughout the world. Now is the time to end systemic racism, not only here in the United States, but all around the world. Mary and Joseph took refuge in Egypt to save Jesus from certain death at the hands of Herod. The dangers that these three faced in Jerusalem are the same dangers that drive millions of asylum seekers around the world from their own countries. We should all emphasize with them and welcome them 
as were Mary, Joseph, and Jesus welcome in Egypt. Thanks be to God.